The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill, and we made it. The NFL draft is tomorrow. Can you believe it? Not really. I, this year is going by so fast. It seems like we did the March Madness show yeah. like a few weeks ago. I mean, uh, technically we kind of did. But yeah, true. But <laughs> in a certain sense, yeah, it's already yeah. been like over, it's been over like a month. Yeah. At least. Uh, but yeah, it's wild. We're in the NFL off season now, completely. NFL draft is going to be. I think this is going to be really exciting. Uh, last year's was super good um, with the AJ Brown trade, and you know the Lions trading up to Jamison Williams. Now that I say that, that's exactly what we were going to talk about. That I said that I wasn't thinking of. Yeah. Um. So we'll go through. We'll talk about Jamison Williams real quick. Then we'll go into a couple NBA playoff notes, and then the whole rest of the time. We're doing our NFL mock draft to get ready for tomorrow. So, as I thought of Jamison Williams, Jamison Williams has been suspended for the first six games of the season this year um, due to gambling on an NFL site facility. Um, Not gambling on any NFL games, um, anything like that. Uh, But it's caused some concern for Detroit fans. And then... One other nobody was also caught uh, doing the same thing as Jameson Williams, so he's also suspended for six games. And Quintez Cephas and uh, CJ Moore were caught betting on actual NFL games, yeah. suspended indefinitely, like Calvin Ridley over a year ago. They were immediately cut, and they've probably ruined their career by just gambling on NFL games. Now, we all know the rule is kind of crazy. We talked about it before with Calvin Ridley over a year ago, like I said. But the rule is still there. And now people are concerned about Jamison Williams because some of the things that he's come out and said on social media in the past, um, maybe not people feeling like he's not fully supporting Jared Goff or whatever, tweeting about Lamar Jackson and all that stuff, whatever. Um, And then... Also, after he got suspended, he apparently went to Las Vegas, did some, I would assume, more gambling and having some more fun. And people are concerned about character, blah, blah, blah. You know, is his head in the right space? That's up for debate. What do you take away from this, Malik? Do you you think Jameson Williams is now a problem for the team? Do you think, what's your thoughts? Before I get to that, I first want to say, it's stupid that he's suspended. The fact that you can't bet on college games at an NFL building is it just it's stupid to me. But that's not the important part. I'm not extremely concerned, but it is a bit of a red flag. Mm-hmm. Because this doesn't happen a lot. Calvin Ridley was like the one of the first big instances in a long time where a player got suspended for like a long period, a whole season mm-hmm. for gambling on an NFL game. And it doesn't happen often. But yeah, it, these these players, they should know the rules. And if they don't, then Maybe the NFL needs to brush people up on these rules because I clearly don't see it as a problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Jamison Williams, as a young guy, betting on college games, I I bet he doesn't see it as a problem either. And I guarantee he doesn't brush up on the NFL rule book on the conduct of players all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, outside of little reminders, I'm sure a lot of players don't know about these very specific things outside of being told, don't bet on NFL games. Don't bet on your own games. Right. But 
Yeah, I, it's a little red flag for me. Nothing too big. He's young. He's still learning. This is the same guy that was at Ohio State with in a room full of loaded receivers and left to go to Alabama for a year. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, mm-hmm. but he could have stayed at Ohio State and been a star there. Right. Decided to go to Alabama. Blew up there for a season. Went to the NFL. Receiver's a diva position, and he's a yeah. young guy. Mm-hmm. Listen. I was going to say, it, it seems at the moment that he's got maybe a little bit of an ego. It's hard to say. Uh, I'm not going to judge the kid necessarily. You have to have an ego to make it to the NFL, to some degree, in my opinion. Um, you have to know how good you are, and obviously he's very talented. Um, So maybe, you know, it, it can just – it'll translate to the field, um, and everything will be all okay. The only thing that I think makes me nervous is now this like puts the Lions in a really weird spot because now we have six games without a guy that we thought was going to be a big contributor to this offense now. And last year we saw the Lions got out of the gate really slow. And now you're missing a key piece that is not going to be there for six games. So the Lions have to be even more careful. And they let go of like DJ Shark. They brought back Marvin Jones, but he's not, you know, he's not what he once was. Their receiving core is still okay, but it's just not top tier, in my opinion. So it makes me wonder like tomorrow, are they going to. There's been a lot of talk about them trading out of 18, um, a lot of talk about trading back. So do they do that out of 18 so that they can get a better wide receiver? Because there's some wide receivers gonna gonna be around that late first round area if they can move back a little bit, um, and we know like we kind of talked about it pre-show, and I don't want to maybe get into what we're gonna do in the mock draft, but there's teams that want to move up to get Bijan Robinson, and 18 is kind of a, a decent spot potentially. Yeah. He might need to be higher, but that might be an option, so they can trade back, and then they could get a wide receiver plus a defensive guy. I, I don't know. It just makes me wonder if it if it changes the Lions game plan at all because they it seems like they kind of gave up DJ Chark because Jamison Williams was going to be that guy now. Um so it's just interesting. I, I don't think it's a huge hamper um to his potential career. Um but it does make me a little nervous that he could fall into like the Kadarius Tony situation where like Kadarius Tony goes to the Giants, kind of messes around too much, doesn't get on the field all that much. Then he gets to go to Kansas City and ball out. That's the only thing that makes me a little nervous is that he's a good enough a talent that some Super Bowl contender could pick him up and just go crazy with him. And then you're like, wow, the Lions just kind of got fleeced by this guy. Um, but it, it's a wait and see process. And I'm I'm not in panic mode yet, to be honest. Um, okay, NBA playoffs. Yeah, Almost over with the first round. Yeah, let's really quick summary. Yeah, Timberwolves dead. Yeah, Clippers dead. Mm-hmm. I, I feel bad for Kawhi. Torn meniscus. Tough. Yeah. Um, my man, Jimmy buckets. My favorite player. Proved again why he's my favorite player. Yep. In the playoffs, he turns into a great, great, all caps great player. Yep. Fifty six points. Destroyed the Bucks. Number one defense didn't matter who they put on him. Miami's up three one, and I kind of feel bad for the the Bucks to be honest because they just got Giannis back. They looked pretty good, and then Jimmy Butler just took over. Blaine Budenholzer. Um, who I don't feel bad for is the Memphis Grizzlies and Dylan Brooks. Um, the memes are flying everywhere. Dylan, it's all your fault. The Lakers you called yourself a villain. Don't blame anyone. The Lakers are up three to one uh, over the Grizzlies. That should uh, possibly come to an end tonight. Uh, the Hawks have been hanging on, Weird and they, series. they get yeah. to go back to Atlanta. Uh, so that series is now 3-2 with a Boston lead. And then tonight, we got Knicks and Cavs. Knicks are trying to close out the Cavs. I love it. Yes. I love, love it. seeing Brunson in that young core. I love seeing the Knicks being Jalen Brunson is now my second favorite player. Yeah. By the way. Um, yeah, like we said, Lakers and Heat in closeout games potentially. 
Warriors and the Kings tied two to two, kind of like everybody yeah. thought. Aaron Fox announced he's probably going to play. Yeah, but he's going to be injured. Yeah. So that will be that's a huge swing game mm-hmm. because the Warriors do have momentum. Steph Curry's got his confidence going, but they do have to play at Sacramento. So that one should be fun. We'll uh, see where that goes from there. And that's a, a quick little wrap up to the first round. First round will be no. over by the next episode. And- Let's get to the important stuff, Joey. The NFL mock draft. Yes. Even more important than the actual NFL draft, some people say. Yes. Our mock draft. Mm-hmm. That important. Yes. Yeah, get McShay out of here. Well, get- I don't I don't mind McShay, but at least we could at least replace yeah. Mel McShay Kiper. is out of yeah, you're right. McShay is okay. <laughs> Kuiper, yeah. Different different mock every single day. Kuiper is one of those guys that he he's definitely given the like Skip Bayless take of like trying to make the hot takes just Listen, just to be. If Jimmy Clausen isn't great, I will quit my job. Well, a quote from Mel Kuiper. Yet he's still around. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, so this year, last year, we gave uh, Malik the Lions picks. Uh, so Malik gave me the honor of allowing me to have the Lions picks this year's yes. this year, which means I will be evens. Malik will be odds, so he gets to play the number one pick slot, which is going to be cool. Yeah. And we decided we're going to try to uh, to allow trades for once. We don't know how this is going to go. Yeah. We're only going to try to do a couple here and there that yeah. makes sense. Nothing too complicated, just simple like pick swaps. Yeah, we, we yeah. won't go into the details because we wouldn't know exactly what it takes. We'll give an idea. Yeah. The Lions um, aren't losing a fifth-round pick. It's okay. They're not losing any extra picks. Yeah. Um. So we'll see, and we'll – uh. Kind of see where this plays out. So, without further ado, Malik, you have the number one pick for Carolina. You're on the clock. Oh, boy. I'm a little nervous here. And the reason is because Bryce Young, I've said before, to me, is the best quarterback in this draft. But here's the thing. I am fully understanding of the fact that his height and his build are a red flag. He had some injury concerns last year, got hurt against Arkansas, still finished out the season, but who knows, that could just be the start. I'm not afraid of his height, throwing over a big offensive lineman in the NFL, but I can understand people's worries on it and people throwing up red flags about it. The Carolina Panthers are trying to find a new identity. They have a new head coach, and they've they've just been stuck in a limbo for like the past three, four, five years. The Matt Rule experiment didn't work. Uh, They brought in Sam Darnold. He had a little flash. Didn't really happen. They brought in Cam Newton again. Did that go well, Joey? No. Did it? it, it, Yeah, it did. No. It really didn't. The reunion tour? Yeah. But along the way, they have made good picks. They do have some good young talent, both on offense and defense. This can turn around somewhat quickly in the next year or two, Mm -hmm. especially in the NFC South, with that division being such in a state of flux. If they get the right guy. If they get the right guy, they could fix things pretty quickly. And that is why I'm afraid to say I'm going safe. I'm going safe with this top pick. If you bring in Bryce Young and he's running around and he's making crazy plays and he's risking his body and putting his stuff on the line with that 5'11", 195-pound frame, things could go bad very quickly again for the Panthers. And I think they need a safety net. And I think the safety net of this draft at the QB position is C.J. Stroud. Wow. Quarterback from the Ohio State Buckeyes. Wow. Even though everybody says he's dropping. I don't listen to none of that nonsense. I just don't. I think a lot of it is just made up draft stuff. It always happens every year with certain players. Mm-hmm. But he has proven that with a decent O-line, Ohio State's O-line hasn't been incredible in his time there. With a decent O-line and time to stand in the pocket, He doesn't make many mistakes. He Mm. just doesn't. He hits open receivers. He throws receivers open at all levels. 
and the major red flag for C.J. Stroud all throughout the season was where's the playmaking? Mm-hmm. Where's the out-the-pocket stuff? Where's the Where are the plays where he runs around and figures things out? Well, he proved it on the biggest stage. Yeah. Against the best team in the country and the best defense in the country, C.J. Stroud lit it up. Over 360 yards passing four touchdowns. And he moved around and made plays. And I think he's shown throughout his years at Ohio State that he is not going to put his body on the line. When he runs, he only does it when it's extremely necessary to get a first down or when when a hole is wide open and you need to get yards. He's going to slide and not do anything crazy. He's accurate. He has a great arm. He he was born to throw a football. That's what it looked like when you watch C.J. Stroud. He is the ultimate natural. Yes, the record with Ohio State quarterbacks isn't great. But I think C.J. Stroud is the best of them. And he's a guy that if you you put him back there, you shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid most plays. Mm. Yeah. Now, any NFL quarterback could get hurt, obviously. But there's less risk with C.J. Stroud. And you throw him in there, I I don't think you're, yeah. Mm. You believe in what he can do. Mm. They brought in Adam Thielen and D.J. Chark, veteran receivers. They've got guys that can get open, and he'll hit them. C.J. Stroud is a Carolina Panther. Hmm. That's wild. Um, well, that makes it interesting for me. Yes. Because yes the only thing – okay, so the, the thing that I don't think is going to change my mind, because I'm Houston, I have the number two pick, I'm on the clock. I think their phones are going to be off the hook, just going crazy, because Bryce Young has now <laughs> not been the number one pick. Um. And the crazy part is he could still not be the number two pick in a lot of scenarios. Um, Houston has said that they're kind of enamored by Bryce Young, but they've also said they're enamored by Will Anderson, that they'd be willing to not take a quarterback, get Will Anderson. So to me, it sounds like Houston doesn't know what they want. So if I'm Houston... Or they're playing games, which a lot of teams do. That's true. Because they have the ultimate leverage right now. It's true. But I think Houston has been right there at the bottom the last couple of years. And and I think this like draft, there's a lot of question marks for all the quarterbacks, to be honest. I know a lot of people are saying that like Bryce Young is a surefire thing. CJ Stroud is a C- surefire thing. I don't know. I see flaws in both. I know that always kind of happens, but I'm kind of a guy that just takes that into account. And I love hoarding picks. And if I'm the Houston Texans, I would be trying to trade out of this spot. And this is the one that's kind of been pretty chalky. I'm going to go with a trade with the Colts. Houston's only moving two spots back. They're not going to really miss out on one of the, They're going to miss out on one of their guys. There's a weird chance that they could miss out on both Bryce Young and Will Anderson moving back to four. But I think that's a risk that you take anyway because you could still go with an upside guy or whatever, but you're also getting another pick. Like, they're going to get... To move up, to move back two spots, they're also still going to get like another, I don't know, second round might be a little too much, but at least like a third round pick, yeah. which is valuable. Um, and you're only moving back two spots. So I'm going to trade with the Colts. And now the Colts are sitting in number two. And I think the Colts, if they're making this move, they are going to take Bryce Young. Because um, in their books, he's the number one guy. So I think it's an easy deal to make. Houston gets what they want. Indianapolis gets what they want because Indianapolis is – literally a team that is ready to make a run they're just missing a quarterback so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have indianapolis move up to two and take bryce young in a lot of people's opinion the best player in the draft but yes i would say he has height concerns but we know that indianapolis has one of the best offensive lines they also sit behind jonathan taylor so there's not a ton of pressure on bryce young necessarily he also has a huge emerging wide receiver in Michael Pittman Jr. Like, it just seems right. It seems like a good fit, whereas Carolina seemed like a little riskier because it seems like you would put more pressure on him um, to turn that team around. Yeah. Whereas Indianapolis, you can kind of be a system guy, and I think that fits Bryce Young really well. So, with number two, the Colts are going to take Bryce Young. I love it. I love it. Coming out with a trade this early, it makes sense. Yeah. And Indianapolis could possibly get a wild card spot or just surprise people mm-hmm. with Bryce Young. Yeah. 
So now Arizona is on the clock at three. If you're Arizona, you're running to the podium right now. <laughs> Everybody in the room is celebrating. Listen, you're applauding. You're all getting together for this announcement. It's simple. Hmm. The Arizona Cardinals select Will Anderson. Okay. Defensive end slash outside linebacker, I guess. Pass rusher from the University of Alabama. The Cardinals, another team obviously in flux. Cliff Kingsbury is gone. Kyler Murray has been frustrated. He's trying to get back on track. DeAndre Hopkins, is he, isn't he he suspended for the um the PEDs? Uh, no, that was last year. Oh, that was last year. Yep. Okay. He served it all yes. last year. He's back. Still got Marquise Brown. You got talent. Mm-hmm. But you do need help on defense. You need a weapon on the defensive end. You got Buda Baker in the secondary. You got some talented guys back there. But you need a real weapon, a guy that strikes fear into uh, opposing offenses. And simple pick, you take Will Anderson, you give him his number 31, Mm -hmm. and you let him go out there and wreak havoc. Simple. Okay. Nice. This is perfect because this is the scenario that Houston would be kind of in flux still. So Houston now sits back at four after they traded back. They lost out on the two guys that they said were their favorites. So if I'm Houston, I'm kind of sitting here like, hmm, do we still go with a high upside quarterback in Anthony Richardson or Well Levis? Or do we go with a safe defensive guy? Um, in this scenario, because we also have a pick at 12 that we get to get to for Houston, and now they have the extra capital, I like to use the extra capital for, I don't know, surefire guys to an extent. Um, so if they have another third-round pick, that's where I think they can bolster that defense. They have so many picks, and I just think their offense needs help. If I'm Houston, I'm taking the swing. I'm taking Anthony Richardson at four because now I'm in that scenario where my two safe guys that would have been, you know, run up to the podium scenarios, they're gone. Now I swing for the fences. If Anthony Richardson needs to sit behind Davis Mills, I think that's acceptable. We've seen that Davis Mills has a a decent ceiling. He struggled last year, but if he can get back to his rookie season, I think they'll be okay with it. And then they can slowly develop Anthony Richardson in, I don't maybe even halfway through the season already, um, but get him slow reps into it and then kind of take over. And you can be somewhat of a, a run-focused offense with Damian Pierce, uh, bolster that offensive line a little bit more, and go from there. I think you just swing for the fences at that point. You're Houston. You've been at the bottom. You need to, you need to take swings at some point. Um so I would take Anthony Richardson at four. Wow. Anthony Richardson at four. Okay. So that kind of, that, that changes things for me. I would also say really quick, this would be another scenario where if, if it happened, I could also see Houston trading down again and they get more draft capital. If if that if those kind of calls came in, I would do it. I couldn't work up a good scenario in that short amount of time um, that I would just go Anthony Richardson. But Seattle's on the clock at five. What are you doing? Seattle's on the clock. This is a tricky scenario for Seattle. I think they might have considered Anthony Richardson. Wow. I feel like Seattle's not on a quarterback, but. It's it's hard to say, but that's my opinion. Yeah, I I personally think they might have invested in the future because who knows if Geno Smith can actually replicate this for another two or three seasons. Mm -hmm. I think they'd also consider consider trading back in this scenario. Yeah. But at the same time, you have a decision to make. And you can either strengthen your O line to help Geno, or you can add an absolute monster to your D line and strengthen your defense. 
in my opinion, this might go against picking the best player on the board. It does go against play, picking the best player on the board. Okay. But when you invest in, you put this much money into Geno Smith. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember what, how high is he ranked in terms of mon- making money in the league right now? I don't know. He's got a decent it's three amount. Three years, a hundred something. Mm-hmm. You have to do everything within your power, okay, to make sure this man stays healthy and does not go down. And because of that, I'm going O line, and I'm going Peter Skaronski from okay. Northwestern. When you invest this much into a quarterback, you do everything you can, whether it's weapons, whether it's O-line. You got to do everything you can. They have DK Metcalf. They have receivers. They have Noah Fant. Mm -hmm. They have a good enough running back core. Well, more than good enough. (laughs) They have a stud that they drafted last year. They have a stud. This helps Geno Smith. This helps... uh, (laughs) Who's the running back? Kenneth, Kenneth Walker. Mm-hmm. This helps Geno Smith. This helps Kenneth Walker. This could help the offense stay on the level they were last year. Putting him in at right or left tackle. I think he's a day one starter. And I think he protects either side for Geno Smith. Hmm. Gotta make sure your investment stays healthy and stays upright. Okay. So I go Peter Skoronsky from Northwestern. Gotcha. Kind of like that pick. Um, but it does make my Detroit pick now at six very difficult just because of the way that it, it kind of plays out. The Lions basically have their pick of the litter here um, of secondary guys. You know, I think Will Anderson would be the number one guy for the Lions um, if he dropped here. Now they have the option of Tyree Wilson, Jalen Carter, one of those cornerbacks, either Devin Witherspoon or Christian Gonzalez, whichever one they favor. For most people, this decision is pretty much easy at this point. You think so? The, who's the most talented player left on this board? To some, to most people, the most talented well, player in this draft. Well, yeah, but there's a lot of backlash behind this player as that player as well. Um, they're also because Vegas sits right behind the Lions. Will Levis is the last big name quarterback. The Lions might get calls if it's from like Tennessee or something, and the Lions move back to eleven. I might think about it, as crazy as that sounds. I might I might think about it. I don't know if I would take it, but I would think about it. Um, however, in this scenario, I'm not going to trade. I would run up to the board, and I would take Jalen Carter. I would say, at one point, he was the number one defensive player. Will Anderson has kind of bumped up. Tyree Wilson has bumped up. But I think... It almost plays into your favor at this point with the Jamison Williams news that the Lions are willing to take these guys that have problems or, you know, red flags. The Lions are willing to take these guys, hopefully be able to mold them into the Detroit culture and turn that negative into a positive and give these guys a place to prove themselves. That's kind of what the Lions are becoming. Like, C.J. Gardner-Johnson has kind of said it. He wants to prove himself um, playing for this team. And you're starting to see that more and more. And I think that if we got Jalen Carter, it could be a huge turnaround, Um, especially with guys like Aiden Hutchinson and Malcolm Rodriguez, guys that just fight. And Jalen Carter, he's one of those guys that just – he takes up space. Like we've, we've said it in the past in the previews. He doesn't necessarily get, like, the crazy numbers or anything, but he's a big body. He moves people around, and he creates space for your other guys to go make sacks and things like that, and he just he causes problems. And in this scenario, I would love to have Jalen Carter, and I think there's just so much potential there that you can't really pass up on it. So Lions taking Jalen Carter at six. Okay. So the Las Vegas Raiders, what a mess. Yeah. What an absolute mess. I mean, what do you, what do you say? 
the Derek Carr and Devontae Adams experiment went well at times, mm-hmm. and it went horrible at times. Your head coach, Josh McDaniels, who you bet on making changes over time, mm-hmm. seems to have a lot of the old habits. Yeah. There's a good chance you should have just stuck with Rich Basaccia, <laughs> who got you to the playoffs a year before. Mm-hmm. They almost cut Josh Jacobs in camp, and he was their best. He was almost the best running back in the league. Yeah, there's just so much with the Raiders that's weird and all over the place. Mm-hmm. You lose Derek Carr in the off season. He moves on to New Orleans. You sign Jimmy Garoppolo from San Francisco. Mm-hmm. My first instinct is to go O line to help Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. But. I think they might have a more pressing need, and that is corner. Mm. Okay. They have struck out on many, many DB selections in the draft over the last few years in the Gruden era. And I think they need a guy that is a really good football player that can just come in and just be steady. Mm -hmm. Just a guy that knows what he's doing and comes in. There's no extra off the field chaos, nothing, just just a really good football player in the secondary that can hold it down on one side for you. I don't know if it's going to be a Sauce Gardner impact, mm-hmm. but a guy that can do the job. And some people say Christian Gonzalez is the best corner in this draft. I think he has great athletic upside. But in my opinion, Devin Witherspoon, Devin Witherspoon from Illinois, is the best DB in this draft, and that's who I'm taking. Okay. With the seventh pick for the Las Vegas Raiders. I think Devin Witherspoon is a day one starter. Not only is he really good in man-to-man coverage, he can play in zone, and boy, he can come up and hit. Mm -hmm. He will be a fan favorite for the Raiders fan base from the start. He's very intelligent. He plays physical. And I think he's, he's just a reliable guy. Mm-hmm. that's going to come in and be a starter for years and just be a very productive, probably Pro Bowl guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big Devin Witherspoon fan. You saw what him and that Illinois secondary did against Michigan. Mm-hmm. They were the one team that almost took them out. They were seconds away. And, yeah, the Illinois just keeps producing NFL-level defensive backs. And, yeah, I'm just I'm going to go Devin Witherspoon okay. to the Raiders. Interesting. Will Levis is falling on our board. No surprise. No surprise at all. Um, but I'm assuming somebody will try to take a swing at him yeah. tomorrow. Um, moving on to Atlanta. Atlanta's interesting. Uh, they could go a number of ways, I would think. Um, I could argue that they could go offensive line here because it seems like they definitely love to run the ball. Um, but I think their offensive line is pretty good. Um, they've also been kind of ramping up their defense in the off season. Uh, so they could keep doing that and bolstering the defense. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that Atlanta is also in a, in a place that, you know, they're ready to take some risks. They had a pretty nice off season, honestly. Um, they could also go corner and take Christian Gonzalez, but I think they'd be okay keeping AJ Terrell, um, hopefully maybe working in Jeff Okuda if they think that he's ready to do that. Yeah. Um, so I would just go at that point. Again, I'm just big on upside at that point. I know it's kind of opposite of what a lot of people think, but in, in my opinion, in that first 10 picks, I don't necessarily want to go super safe. I want to go with big swings because the big swings are going to get you over the hump. The safe plays for these bottom teams aren't going to move the needle a whole lot necessarily. So in this case, I'm taking Nolan Smith for Atlanta. Just powerhouse. If I had that pick, I would consider it too. Defense and just yeah. I I want to hear your thoughts on how how athletically incredible he is and how he's all testing numbers. But on the opposite side, yeah. What kind of production are you getting from him? I want to know what, what you think about that. I mean, I think like their defense. And what position do you play him at? Also, I think you leave him. In the linebacking role. Okay. Um, and I think they can, they can. I mean, you can definitely move him around. Uh, it seems like their their defense is kind of building towards that a little bit. 
Um, and I think they just want to like, they want to slow games down because obviously they're the way they ran the ball so many times last year. And now they're bolstering up their defense. Like I've been saying, I think they just want to like play old grinded out kind of football. And so they want to put pressure on teams and do as much as they can. So if you have a guy that, you know, just like we said, with the measurables of Nolan Smith, just like running around crazy, sending him on crazy blitz packages. I think they can just do a lot of different things um, with Nolan Smith. And he's, he's a guy that, you know, just they can kind of move him around. And I think that that plays well into this day and age of the NFL. I was trying to look for their other offseason signings. Um, but They got Jesse Bates, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, they signed Jesse yeah, Bates. Yeah, Jesse from, Bates was one. Cincinnati. So they did a lot of secondary movement. Um, and they got another uh, – let's see. This is why you need oh, to they got prepare, Joey. David Onyemata, oh, Jesse okay. Bates. Um, Eddie Goldman's not bad. So, like, they've, they've just been working on their defense. Yeah. And I, I think that, uh, again, at this point, you're going for swings. Atlanta's not going to improve in one season necessarily, and I think you just go with the upside. So I would take Nolan Smith. Interesting pick. I like it. Yeah, really, if you just bring him in and give him a simple role from the jump of, like, see ball, hit ball, mm-hmm. just hit the guy with the ball, you you might get some good production out of him. Yeah, he he has time to – he needs time to develop the rest yeah. of his game. So, ninth pick, the Chicago Bears. I wouldn't spend much time thinking about this one either. He used a lot of money in the offseason. You got Justin Field some weapons. Mm-hmm. You know who your running back is, Khalil Harbert. Yep. You still need some help in the defense, but you have a solid core for the most part. Like it was for Seattle, I think you got to invest in your young quarterback. Mm. Well, Geno isn't young. <laughs> yeah, they just had to invest in their quarterback. Yeah. In Chicago, you have to invest in your young, your young quarterback. Right. He is a athletic phenom. Big arm. Incredible runner with the football. Yeah. But if he's going to stay healthy for an extended period of time, he needs some help back there so he can stand back there and make decisions. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I'm going to take Paris Johnson, offensive tackle from Ohio State, with the ninth pick. Could be a starting piece right now. They have an okay starting line, but they Mm -hmm. definitely – could use more help. Yeah. And Paris Johnson could be a guy that could p- protect his blind side. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm going Paris Johnson from Ohio State. Okay. All right, this puts me in an interesting situation, too. Philadelphia has been mocked so many times to get B. John Robinson here, and it makes a lot of sense. I don't blame anybody for Philadelphia taking B. John here. Where did Miles Sanders sign again? Carolina. Okay, yeah. Um, but the way that Philadelphia plays, I, I mean, don't. The, the run game is a, is a very important. It is, yeah. but and you don't want Jalen Hurts to right have so much mileage on his body. But I think they like Kenneth Gainwell. I think they like Boston Scott. As weird as that is they to do. say, they like their rotation of guys, and I think they could find another running back that they would like in a later round. And we've skipped over. One of the guys that's rose the most since the beginning of the offseason. And, you know, this is a position for Philadelphia that's aging. Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett. I mean, and then they got Josh Sweat, I believe, as well. That's another one. Um, But it's, they could use another guy like this. And I think, you know, coming off of a, a Super Bowl run, I think you just run up there and you take Tyree Wilson. He's got a lot of potential. A lot of people think he might be the best defensive player in the draft, which is wild. Yeah. He's for his size, he's a mm-hmm. ridiculous athlete. And for him to go on a team that's, you know, again, he he's based he he go, he'll get overshadowed by all these other players. Yeah. Um, there won't be much pressure on him, exactly. which is good. Um 
and I think he can just shine in that role. And Philadelphia just keeps upping their crazy defense that they have already. Um, I think, again, you can find running backs in later rounds. That's what a lot of people always say is, you know, you don't take a running back in the first round. But they had a chance there, but I think I would take Tyree Wilson. For him to fall to 10, I think, would be wild. I like that a lot. So, Titans at 11. This team is in a weird spot. Mm Mm-hmm. They can't. They just can't seem to get over the hump. They traded away AJ Brown. He instantly became a key piece to a Super Bowl contender. Derrick Henry's getting older. Taylor Lewan is out. Ryan Tannehill is still there, but they have Malik Willis in the wings, mm-hmm. learning. You still have good pieces. You just signed Jeffrey Simmons to a huge contract. Mm-hmm. He'll be there for most of his career. Let's hope. You got good pieces in the secondary on defense. Whether it's Ryan Tannehill or Malik Willis, you need more than Traylon Burks. You need an option that you can go to consistently that'll just keep giving you first downs and keep moving the ball down the field. Mm -hmm. Traylon Burks is your big play guy, whether he gets it out the backfield or goes deep or across the middle. I think this is the time for the first receiver on the board to come off. And I think that receiver is Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State. Mm. He's a bigger slot receiver. He's like 6'1", 200 pounds. He is a route running master. He doesn't, he's not the fastest guy. He has good speed, but his, his biggest strength is using his route running ability. Mm -hmm. His quickness and short bursts to get wide open. He has great hands. He rarely drops passes. Really good making contested catches also. And you can just keep feeding him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get tired. Now, the the injury thing, it's a bit of a red flag. But, listen, he put up the best stats on a team with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. He was the youngest of the group, and he had the best season two seasons ago. This kid is the real deal. And I think he's an automatic first down guy just over and over and over again, just keeps getting yards, Mm -hmm. keeps getting open and moving you down the field. And I think Tennessee needs a guy like that to take some heat off of Derrick Henry so he doesn't have to have all the load and to get Traylon Burks more open opportunities. Mm -hmm. So Jackson Smith and Jigba to the Tennessee Titans. Okay. Well, that throws Houston off once again. Yes, sir. Um, But that's fine. I think at this point, Houston would, I think they could take Zay Flowers, but I think they might be a little nervous to take him at 12 necessarily, even though he fits right into what they need. Um, You know, they have Nico Collins there. Hopefully John Mechie is healthy. So they got their outside guys. They kind of need that slot guy. But I think with Jackson Smith and Jigba gone, I think they would turn elsewhere. And I think they just take the best guy on the board at this point. Since they took the big swing earlier and took Anthony Richardson, I think here they would just be like, wow, we compared Christian Gonzalez with uh, Derek Stingley. I think we'll take that. And I would go Christian Gonzalez. I think kind of a no-brainer at this point. It's a pretty pretty nice young core you're building out in Houston right now, (laughs) sir. I, I respect your moves. Thank you. I respect it. Green Bay. (laughs) The Green Bay Packers. Because we didn't talk about it. They did finally move on from Aaron Rodgers. Yep. They swapped picks 13 and 15. So Green Bay now sits at 13. Uh, Jordan Love is the quarterback. Jordan Love is your quarterback for this upcoming season. So what are you doing as a pack? Listen. (laughs) This this is hilarious (laughs) that they just might do this. As soon as Aaron Rodgers leaves, Alan Lazard is gone. Mm-hmm. You drafted the receiver last year. He's the future now. He erupted in the second half of the season. But outside of that, who do you have for receiver options? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know the many guys you depend on. So for the first time, and I think since, wasn't it since like 2007? Something uh, like that. It it maybe. was a long time since the Packers drafted a first round receiver. Maybe. But did they took 
uh, the kid last year. Yeah, he was they like took him in the second round, wasn't didn't they? Uh, no, didn't they trade up for like thirty two or something? Like he was at the very yeah, end. Uh, yeah, okay, something been like at that. The very end, but for the first time maybe ever, the Packers are going to follow up a receiver with another receiver in the first round. Okay. Now, who the receiver is, you have options. You could go for Quentin Johnston. You could go for Zay Flowers. You could go for Jordan Addison. Mm-hmm. Who do you choose? I've made it clear that I personally believe Zay Flowers is, might be the best receiver in this class. Mm-hmm. The Packers believe that? I don't know. They could, pick, they could pair two big receivers, adding Quentin Johnston. Jordan Addison is a really productive guy out of college, won the Bolitnikoff. I'm sorry. Do it, wait. I'm rethinking it. I'm rethinking it. Hmm. Let me look here really quickly. Tick, tick, tick. 13th tick, pick. tick, tick. <laughs> I'm going to swap a pick. You got to remember they still have Romeo Dobbs as well. I don't know what your feelings on Romeo Dobbs are, but true, he is there. He's kind Listen, of another outside. Guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna swap a pick. Okay. And I'm going to give you the 14th. I mean the 13th pick. Oh, so and you're I'm trading with New England? 14. Yes. <laughs> Just so you can decide. Yes. Okay. I'm going to give you the 13th pick and go, and slide back to 14. Okay. Also, kinda- because I know New England, they are one of the main teams that are on Zay Flowers. Mm-hmm. And they've like been the main target for him, so I feel like they they won't want to miss their opportunity to maybe jump up and get him. Okay. So swapping a pick, thirteen and fourteen, you're on the clock. Well, funny enough, I'm not looking at wide receiver. <laughs> okay. Because All for right. some reason the Patriots just, I don't, they don't do it. They're also kind of like Green Bay, where they seem like you they, believe there's no way they're going to do it. I mean, they took Nikhil Harry. Well, how did that work out? True, but they've, but shown maybe, they're, they've shown they're not afraid to do it. However, maybe we'll make the exact same mistake from another position. New England have, was talking about shopping Mac Jones. Will Levis is on the board. Listen, if you're going to do it, do it. I'm taking Will Levis. <laughs> I don't know like if New England doesn't take him. In our scenario, maybe he drops to Washington. And if he doesn't get taken by Washington, he could drop a long way. It's possible. Uh, so I would think New England's going to take a chance. I know they, they did this last year kind of with Bailey Zappi and made Mac Jones kind of fight for his spot. But now they're really going to test the waters. And maybe they move on from Mac Jones and give one of these other teams a trade option, maybe like uh, Tennessee or something. I don't know. Um, but I think New England is close enough to where they could they could make this kind of move. So New England's going to take Will, Will Levis. New England. What a mess in, <laughs> in New England. What an absolute mess. I'm sorry, Patriots fans. Yeah. Joey might have just ruined your season. That's why when you said that <laughs> trade, it wasn't going to change my opinion. <laughs> Listen, Bailey Zappi forever. Bailey Zappi over Will Levis. You better agree. <laughs> We'll see. With the 14th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Zay Flowers, wide receiver, Boston College. Christian Watson is a big, deep threat, but he can also catch it over the middle and make plays. I think Zay Flowers is is a better route runner than Christian Watson already. I think he's just as much a deep threat. Mm Mm-hmm. I think he could be more of a playmaker. You you could do reverses. You could do screens. You could send him deep. There are so many options with Zay Flowers. Mm-hmm. You don't just have to use him as a deep threat. He is a real high level receiver. Yeah. Now he is small. Mm-hmm. He's five ten on a on a on his best day. Yeah. A hundred eighty pounds on his best day. But he's really good. Mm-hmm. He's really really good, and you got to help Jordan Love. He's got to have some explosion. Online offense. So the Green Bay Packers select Zay Flowers from Boston College. Okay. All right. This gets interesting. We got the New York Jets up now. 
We've hit the halfway point. And I have no idea what they want to do. We only have 10 minutes left, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, we could technically go over a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we could, yeah. Um, let's see, man. If the Jets are on the clock here at 15, I'm not sure where they would go, to be completely honest. Um, their defense is pretty good. I mean, you could. I don't know if they, if if, you, if there's a reach, but you you get a line to help Aaron Rodgers. I don't know. Yeah, I'm no, that's, that's the other thought. Yeah. is helping Aaron Rodgers. Uh, they already brought in Alan Lazard. Um, they have Garrett Wilson. I think they would have run up to the board if it was Jackson Smith and Jigba or Zay Flowers, possibly. Um, but this might be an Aaron Rodgers pick, so I have no idea. I guess I'll go with the safe option, and I will just bolster the offensive line. I'll take Broderick Jones. Okay. Best available Pretty safe. offensive lineman. Now I could see, you know, I don't know, somebody that Aaron Rodgers wants to take and say, hey, we got to take this guy, and then they take him. But uh, I'll just go with Broderick Jones. You're trying to protect your new quarterback that you think can take you to the Super Bowl. Wait, since, since oh wait, <laughs> we messed. I just up realized, yeah, <laughs> because of the trade, we messed it up. I actually listen. I I'm I'm not making this up. If I had the Jets pick, I would have followed the exact same logic, and I would have taken Broderick Jones. Okay. So we can keep the pick. Okay, we can keep it. It's because we traded, but then we, yeah, yeah. Because the first time I traded with myself, we didn't figure that far. If we traded with each other, what how we would do that? Listen, how, how about how about we do this? How about we get a little crazy? Okay. How about I make this commander's pick and then we just get back on track? Fair enough. Go for it. Because I, I have my mind made up on this pick and I want to get crazy. Okay. Listen. The Washington commanders, I'm about to give them somebody to help them block for Sam Howell to keep him safe and help their run game and somebody that could help them in the past game, potentially, okay. on paper. <laughs> Okay. I think I know where that's going. Washington Commanders select Darnell Washington from Georgia. Tight end. I kind of like it. We talked about Darnell Washington yeah. t- quite a bit. The Commanders are taking a swing on the incredible upside of the 6'8", 265-pound Darnell Washington. The kid can run. He can catch. They just didn't use him as much as they needed to because they wanted him to block. Mm-hmm. And they already had Brock Bowers. Yep. But when he catches the ball, he is a wrecking ball, and he yep. can move. And he's he was almost the best blocker in the country at the tight end position. Yeah. They could go to a two tight end set because they also have big Logan Thomas. Um, they Dark, do focus yeah. on the run game a lot, but they have capable wide receivers. Yes. Yeah, I think it makes, I think it makes High sense. High level blocker. Yeah. A potential, very good passer. Mm-hmm. You don't have to feed him. He's already used to getting, like, occasional targets just to keep you honest. Okay. So, yeah, the Washington Commanders take Darnell Washington. Kind of like that swing. I, I'm, I like the big swing picks. Now, back on track. I got the <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers. Your team. My team. Former, oh, boy. Formerly known. My team. So, when you're looking at the board, the Steelers just lost Cam Sutton. Mm-hmm. But they also need O-line help. Yep. When you look at the board and see what's left, uh, you got See, Darnell right. You got Darnell right, and then uh, you could take a reach on a inside guy on the O line. Mm-hmm. Maybe you got Joey Porter Jr. That would be a fan favorite, but right, it's a bit of a reach mm-hmm. at this at this time. You know what? Um, yeah, I'm gonna go Darnell right okay. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, the back to back Darnells. Yes, something to help Kenny Pickett. Keep him safe back there. Really good tackle prospect, Darnell Wright. Mm-hmm. And we're we're to the Lions. We're back once again, and kind of going off of your uh, your crazy feeling. You got a feeling? There's been a lot of talk. I I, I also think I would enjoy. If the Lions were able were able to trade this pick, whether they trade up or trade back, 
I'd be okay with it. Man, this is wild because we talked about it pre-show. This could be a spot where Dallas potentially, maybe a lot of other teams, would want to try to move up and take Bijan Robinson. The Lions could also slap everybody in the face and say, we're taking Bijan Robinson here. And I kind of want to do it. Um, but I also, I know you're not the biggest fan of Quentin Johnston. But now there's concerns. I, like lo- uh, yeah, I don't love him. I like we him We got lot. concerns about Jamison Williams. And we're sitting at 18. Okay. We also got Kalaja Kansi. He's another guy that's been kind of moving up on boards yeah. for people. A lot of people have said this is where the Lions could. Lions. Yeah, if they, di- if they didn't get Jalen Carter. Right. If. The team likes likes him. And I think even with Jalen Jalen Carter, there's potential you could still take Kalaja Kansi here. Wouldn't make as much sense. Um, but I could see there being a way to it. Um, but I think I'm going to take the offensive talent and it's so weird for me. Do I take Bijan Robinson thinking that I just want to trade DeAndre Swift partially, or do I take the Quentin Johnston route where we just have Quentin Johnston, Jameson Williams at one point, Amon Ross St. Brown, with backups of Josh Reynolds and Marvin Jones? Listen, this is up to the the Lions' future. It's in your hands. I know. You could ruin this completely. I, you know, I you now, save the franchise. I now feel the pressure. I understand it. Listen, I understand. The division is in the balance, Joey. Yeah. The division is in the balance. And I think Which, we just need doing? a little more balance. I'm taking Quinton Johnston. Okay. Another big receiver. He can put on the other side. I think he kind of can can become a big catch guy or just a big body. Jamison Williams, the big deep threat um, for the wild plays. I think he would pair a good opposite. And then, of course, Amon, y- Amon Ross St. Brown, whenever you need the surefire first down type of uh, thing. I would like the Bijan Robinson thing, too. Um but I think with signing David Montgomery, there's not a need there to go running back this early, even though I think it would be fun. I think it would be doable. But I just, I know people want to focus on the defense, and so do I. But in this scenario, I think if you go one offensive player here, then you don't really have to worry about the offense the rest of the draft for the most part. And you can go defensive player, defensive player, defensive player. So I'm going to take Quentin Johnston. He's been falling a little bit. But I think the talent is still potentially there. And again, you're taking another guy that, you know, people are starting to say red flags, at least on more on the talent side. But um, but at one point was thought of as maybe one of the best wide receivers in the draft. So I'm going with it. Lions are swinging big. So. Kind of to speed things up, but I've I've already made my decision on this Tampa Bay Bucks pick. Yep. I think no matter what you do for that offense to help on the O line, I think it's kind of bleak. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of bleak, especially with Baker back there. You don't know what he's going to do, especially with protection behind him. Yeah. So I'm going to keep trying to strengthen this defense. You lost a few guys, but you still got some strong pieces there, some strong young pieces. Mm-hmm. I'm taking Lucas Van Ness. Okay. Yeah. Edge player from Iowa. Really athletic, really strong, good power moves, good. He He's just a well-balanced defensive player on the defensive line and coming off the edge. Okay. And should be very productive for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a while. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just a dependable defensive player to help that defense get even better. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're back to Seattle. Hmm. Seattle's another interesting one. They need some. They need some help. A little bit everywhere. Um, But I think I'm kind of riding the same boat that you are. That... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe not. Now that I think about it, you know, I was going to say Seattle should just run up and take Jordan Addison. Kind of be like a Tyler Lockett replacement. Um, 
I think again, they're good at receiver for now. Providing, yeah. Yeah. Providing more for their team. But now that I look at it, look at it, the Lions passed up in Kalaja Kansi. I think Seattle would be good to go take Kalaja Kansi. Their secondary has improved um with Tariq Woolen. Um their defense still needs some help. And I think Kalaja Kansi would just give them solid defensive presence on the line. Okay. And with that mention of Jordan Addison. The Los Angeles Chargers. I want to call them wow. San Diego so bad. I I will always hate the fact that they left San Diego. It makes no sense. The powder blue Chargers. Probably the best uniforms in the league. Go to the podium and they select Jordan Addison. Hmm. And their receiving core isn't fine? I think Keenan Allen, I think his health is a concern. That's fair. I think Mike Williams is legit, but after how long do you think you can depend on Josh Palmer? Do you think he has an upside, a higher upside? Okay. Do you think Kenny Guyton has a higher high upside? Jalen Guyton. J- Jalen Guyton, not Kenny Guyton. Jalen Guyton. Mm-hmm. Like I, I like their third guys, but if you want to get the best out of Justin Herbert and make this run, mm-hmm. you've you've got to really kick it into high gear. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I feel like they're good in a lot of places. I think coaching is probably their <laughs> – Brandon Staley might be their biggest problem, mm-hmm. but they're not changing him. So, I, I say add Jordan Addison. He probably becomes your best third guy as the season goes on. And if Keenan Allen has injury problems like he's had the past few years, mm-hmm. he can step up and be, and be your number two behind Mike Williams. So, Jordan Addison to the Chargers. Wow. So, I will say right here, and I want to make this – on the record, because I think it would be a fun call. Um, I'm going to call that at 21, the Chargers find a trade partner for Austin Eckler, hmm. and they draft Bijan Robinson here. It's possible. I, I know they drafted Isaiah Spiller last year, but I don't think he gave them what they thought they were going to get. Um, I think that would be a fun draft night scenario. Yeah. Now, who it, who would it be with? I'm not. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, but that's one that I'm, I'm just going to say, watch out for that one. I agree. It, it, it is very possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Let's see. We are at Baltimore. I think this is another good spot for a possible trade. Um, I think again, anybody that's in the, uh, B. John Robinson books would probably go for, um, but Baltimore, they're, let's just say they have their ways. Um, they like to go defense. I think maybe they go Bijan if they can't get a Lamar Jackson deal done. But I think if they feel like they're going to, I think in this scenario, you just bolster your defense where they've kind of been lacking recently is, you know, at the line at the end, Baltimore Ravens are going to take miles Murphy from Clemson. I think that's a pretty pretty safe, easy pick for them to just keep helping out their defense. They used a lot of their offseason last year to secure the secondary. Didn't work out great. They had some injuries. So I think now they get a get got to get back to the interior of the defense. And I think Miles Murphy would fit in well. The Minnesota Vikings. They're a mess. They just lost Adam Thielen after a long time of him being their number two guy. But I don't know if there's a receiver here that they really just want to jump on. They also might be in the process of losing losing Dalvin Cook. Yes. They need help in several places. Their defense was terrible last year for the most part. (laughs) A lot of it was scheme and a lot of it was the players they had. I think they need secondary help. I'm going Joey Porter Jr. in this pick. Okay. Yeah. Minnesota has also been one that a lot of people have said to watch out for to trade up. I'm not sure exactly what position, but uh, just something to watch out for. Be interesting. Oh, boy. Jacksonville. What does Jacksonville do? Oh, boy. Um... Yeah. 
I feel like Jacksonville needs some secondary help. There are still some good. There are still some really good corners. Yeah, I, I think that's where their. I think that's where their defense is lacking the most. I think their offensive line is okay. Uh, that might be another spot you could look at. I think another. This is where you get in the fun teams. I think it would be really fun the way that they did not fully commit to Travis Etienne as like a full like workload back. If Jacksonville got Bijan Robinson, their offense is like sky high at that point um, with all those weapons. I, I think it would just be fun personally, but I think I'll go the safe route. I think they'll try to increase their secondary. I'll go with Emmanuel Forbes out of Mississippi state. Just next highest rated cornerback. Um, they need to up their defense. They've got, they got torched a little bit at times. Oops. Oh, the New York Giants just put a lot of money into Danny Dimes. The New York football Giants. They put a lot of coins into Danny Dimes. Mm-hmm. Yes, they did. Signed. They got Darren Waller as well. Yeah, they did. So, and I don't think this is the time to reach for a receiver. No, I, I think they have decent weapons, but I think they yeah. can get just as good later. Yeah, their O line was better last year, but it still could get better. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was really bad for a long time, and it improved last year. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go Steve Avila from TCU. Okay. Inside in, lineman interior, guard. Yeah. Yeah, interior O lineman. Once he gets his hands on people, they barely get off. He's he was one of the best guards in the country this season. Mm. He's so powerful. And yeah, I'm I'm just I'm gonna go Steve Avila. Okay. Just to yeah, bolster that O line. Keep helping that helping out Danny Dimes. And now I'm to Dallas. Which is where I would hate B. John Robinson to go. It's going to happen. Uh, but, and I want to say that they're committed to Tony Pollard, but they are also a team where they just love to use two running backs. B. John Robinson is going higher than this. Yes. He is. For sure. Somebody's- just, uh, he could go in the Chargers spot, but just just because they haven't figured out the yes. Austin Eckler situation yet. Yeah. And there's there's always there are always times where players say they want to get traded and then things get figured out exactly. with money. Yep. That's yeah. That's why I went with receiver. I think but Bijan can go anywhere from ten to Philadelphia to anywhere. But if yeah. he makes it this far, I think teams are going to start being aggressive to trade because I think definitely I think Dallas would love to have him. Honestly, Buffalo would love to have him. Cincinnati would love to have him because they look like they might be losing Joe Mixon. New Orleans would love to have him because Alvin Kamara. Who knows how much longer his career is going to go, and he's already you know possibly going to be suspended. Um, and you can't let him get to Philly at 30 because that would be insane. You're going to give Philly Tyree Wilson and B. John Robinson? No, that's not going to happen. Dallas is going to run up there. They're going to take B. John Robinson. I'm going to hate it. It's the one place I don't want him to go. I agree 100%, but I'm also... I've just given up to the fact that it's probably happening, so... Congratulations, Dallas, I guess. Yeah. Congratulations. And now we're to the good teams. I think the Bills need running back help, too. They like James Cook. They like James Cook, but, but do they love James Cook? Right, exactly. They brought in Naheem Hines. Mm-hmm. He's good. He's more of a special teams still, guy. Yeah. Uh, you look at their needs. Hey, you know what? Let's just let's let's have fun. Okay. Back to back running backs. We're going Jameer Gibbs from Alabama. Latest rumors are he's better than Bijan Robinson. In the open field, yes. <laughs> he he is Alvin Kamara like in the open field where he either makes you miss or you get hands on him and you, he's he's instantly off. Like Bijan is the guy you hand the ball to 20 25 times. Mhm. Jameer Gibbs is the guy where you can line him up in the slot. You can throw to him out of the backfield. You can give him like 13, 14, 15 carries, maybe more on days where he's hot. I, I'm a big Jameer Gibbs fan, and I think Buffalo would be excited to get Jameer Gibbs. 
Yeah. So, yeah. And Cincinnati might be sad that they get Jameer Gibbs because that might be a, po- a spot that they get him. They would get him because they lost Samaj P. Ryan in the offseason. Joe Mixon, he's in purgatory right now, actually. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, but they here at 28, they can't take back-to-back-to-back running backs. Zach Charbonnet kind of being the next best guy. You could get him in the second round. So I think at this point, I think you just keep helping that crazy offense. I don't know if there's a guy up there enough that I want on the defensive side, even though they probably do need some more defensive help. Um, That, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't see anybody that I fully want from the defensive side of the ball at 28. I think they are going to take the quote-unquote best tight end in the draft in Dalton Kincaid. I think he would help uh, kind of protect Joe Burrow. They got some offensive line help uh, last year. Didn't fully help. They still struggled a bit. So he can block a little bit, but he can also get out in open space. Yes, they have Hayden Hurst, but it seems like Hayden Hurst has, is at this point a known quantity. I think they could upgrade their tight end, and I think you know Kincaid kind of fits into that mold that Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, they go the deep routes. Yes, you do have Tyler Boyd as well, but Dalton Kincaid can also fill the middle of the field with Tyler Boyd. Just gives them crazy more weapons. Yeah, now, because this is a very deep, uh, tight end class. Michael Mayer will also be in consideration there. And yes. a lot of people think Sam Laporta could be the first tight end off the board. Yep. But I like Dalton Kincaid a lot. So yeah, I like that pick. Mm-hmm. The Saints pick, I've already decided. I think they need some D line help. And I'm going with Brian Brzee from Clemson. I like that pick. Now, he's had injury issues at Clemson, but when he is healthy, he is close to unstoppable. 6'5", 300 pounds, super quick off the D-tackle position, Mm -hmm. can rush the passer very well and can also contain the run. I think he's a guy you slide in maybe as a rotational guy from the jump, but he's a starter eventually. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that is a key piece to your D-line for a long time, especially if he can stay healthy. Brian Brzee from Clemson goes to the Saints. Okay. This is another kind of a weird spot for Philly, I think. Um, and maybe I'll take a, a kind of a, a swing. Not a, not Why like not? a not a huge swing or anything like that. Um, but just a little swing. And we just happened to mention him. I'm gonna take a tight end. And I'm gonna take a tight end out of tight end university. I'm going to have Philadelphia taking Sam Laporta. I know Sam they have Zach Ertz. And... Well, uh, not Zach Ertz. Uh, yeah, they have... Um... <laughs> Both slipping hard. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Google. Oh, man. Philly, tight, and Dallas Goddard. <laughs> Dallas Goddard. Yes. Jeez. But I think the way that Philly plays... They could go back to a a double tight end kind of deal on their offense. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, they don't they don't really have that third wide receiver. So I think they could play more of those two tight end, two wide receiver, run the ball kind of stuff. Um blocking. But Sam Laporta can also get out, make some catches. And I think if they like Dallas Goddard is already known to make some really crazy catches for a tight end. So if you have Sam Laporta and Dallas Goddard, I know it's kind of unconventional, but I feel like it would work into the way that they run their offense. I think it's a good enough risk, and I don't see any other defensive guys at the top here that I would want to take. So maybe with Philadelphia, again, Philly is in a weird spot. You know, when you're a team that just came off a Super Bowl, you can kind of do, you can deviate from the norm. And I think Sam Laporta might be a thing. I'm just going to ride ride it. Give it a shot. And with the last pick in the first round, Kansas City Chiefs. 
Super Bowl champions. The pick of the litter. I've already made my decision. Okay. I think they might pick offense later in the draft. They know what uh, what to do when they pick receivers and skill talent, so I think they'll probably find someone that can slide in there. Mm-hmm. I think first round they pick somebody on defense. And I pick they pick a guy that they can use in multiple ways, both at linebacker and as a pass rusher. I think he has T.J. Watt-ish ability. Hmm. I'm going with Drew Sanders from Arkansas. Okay. Linebacker slash pass rusher. You can stand him up. You can put his hand in the dirt. Have him stand. Have him be a stand-up rusher off the edge. There are so many things you can have Drew Sanders do because he has the ability and the IQ to do it. Yeah. He's just he's a monster. Back there. Yeah. He he hits hard, and he makes plays, and I think adding him to the Kansas City defense only only helps them, makes them better. Mm-hmm. And to so, me. Yeah. That literally makes it feel like the steals that they got last year. Yeah. Um, when they got like Trent McDuffie. Um, who was the other guy that they got? Pass rusher from Purdue, George Carlock. Carloftis, yes. Yeah. And I they, was just so mad. Him, yeah. They picked him. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. That those guys, they got to get guys like that caliber of talent. Yeah. That's kind of how this feels. And that's why I said teams like this can deviate. Drew Sanders is like, for a lot of people, the best linebacker in the draft. So for him to be able to slot in, like, yes, they have Nick Bolton. Yes, they have Willie Gay, but they could use extra linebackers um, to throw in there and to just get another talent like that would be be pretty big. Yes, I, I like that pick, honestly. Um, if anybody noticed, there's only 31 picks. Yeah. Uh, that's because... Uh, was it the Dolphins got their pick vacated for tampering or whatever? I think so. Um, so, yeah, 31 picks in the first round. Kind of weird, kind of odd. But that is our definitive mock draft. That's what you're going to see tomorrow night. Just be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> no, if anything. If the New England Patriots tra- take Will Levis, I, sw- I swear. It's going to yeah. be wild. I, I Like I said, I'm excited for this draft because really the draft starts – at this point, with Will Levis now being like all the way up, as people are thinking that he could be the number one pick for some crazy reason, this draft is going to start at one. And a lot of people, at, for a while, were thinking that the draft would start right at two. Like Bryce Young to Carolina, done. And then after that, who knows? Now, right from the, right from the rip, I don't know where this draft is going to go. I'm excited. Uh, there's a lot of cool talent that I want to see go to fun places. B. John Robinson, please do not go to, go to Dallas. Somebody please trade up for that man. Um, mm-hmm. Don't let Dallas take them. Um, Somebody is going to drop. It always happens. We saw Malik Willis drop last year. People thought crazy. Will Levis is going to drop. I'm predicting it right now. You think so? He's going to fall. What if Anthony Richardson is the one to drop? I'd be shocked. Yeah. I'd, honestly, yeah. I'd be very shocked. I think Nolan Smith could drop. Yeah, because a lot of people just so don't know how they would use them. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see Tyree Wilson also being the one to drop. That he's maybe a guy that a lot of teams are using as smoke, um, which is unfortunate. But I do think he would still go pretty early. Um, I think there's going to be some teams that get aggressive and try to move up. Um, a lot of people have thought that Tennessee could be one. That potentially Detroit could be one. I would love. I would love to see Detroit make another move again. Um. Before we go, since we'll we'll make it to about 90 minutes, what would your favorite pick be? It doesn't have to necessarily be for the Lions, but if a team got a specific player, what would be like your favorite fit for a specific player? My favorite fit for a specific player. Honestly, I think B. John Robinson to the Chargers would probably be like my favorite slide in. Let's get rolling pick. Okay. Yeah. If the Austin Eckler thing really just comes to an end and they can't make amends, yeah, I, I would love to see B. John with the Chargers. Okay. I also feel that way kind of about Philadelphia. And the other rumored one that I've heard lately that I kind of like, and I can't believe I'm saying it because it's about the Jets, but pairing Jackson Smith and Jigba. 
with Garrett Wilson again would be kind of fun. It would. I don't like Aaron Rodgers. I don't like the Jets. <laughs> but I like the rest of what they've done with their franchise. Um, I have to give them credit to that. Um, and obviously, whatever the Lions are able to do. If the Lions are able to get Will Anderson, I will be shouting from the rooftops. <laughs> it's a win. Um, if yeah. they move up. It's a big win. Um, also, if they're able to trade out of 18, I, th- I think I would be kind of happy with that. Um, but also, like my scenario that came up, if they drafted Quentin Johnston or B. John Robinson at 18, I would be excited. I don't know if I would be like, that would be my favorite, but I would be excited for getting more offensive talent. I think it would just be, it would be fun. Uh, this offensive is a, is already fun to watch. So adding a talent like that would be really cool. Um, but other than that, I think that's about it. You got anything else to say about the, uh, the about the draft? Any bold predictions like my uh, Austin Eckler trade? I, what, um, yeah, let's do that. What's your bold prediction for tomorrow's draft? Whether well, it be somebody trades wonder, or somebody falls or somebody goes way higher than... Like, you could use C.J. Stroud going number one as your bold pick. My bold prediction is, is that 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 commander's pick, I think Darnell Washington will be close to top 15. Mm. That'll be my bold pick. Okay. Darnell Washington will go even higher than people think because his upside is just so crazy. You think he'll be the number one tight end? You want to make that as your bold call? Yes. Okay. Darnell Washington will be the number one tight end off the board. Okay. I kind of like it. Like we said, we like Darnell yeah. Washington. I like the upside. Um. And of course, our good bet, our good buddy uh, Chris Pappas, his bold prediction: Will Levis goes number one. Uh, come on, man! man. Come it, on, man! The the chaos in, ensuing would be incredible, but man, I I just hope that the, I don't want that to happen to Panthers fans. I don't want that to happen. Give them a break. Sometimes I enjoy the chaos, but yeah, <laughs> that'd be a bit much. It'd be it'd be wild. Alrighty, this has been views from the sidelines. Um, next week, we will, of course, review the draft, see how wrong we were. Um, we'll get back to a little bit more in-depth of playoff talk, but we'll definitely get into the uh, Lions draft review fully all the rounds. Um, hopefully, they have a good draft, and uh, hopefully exci- it's exciting. I always enjoy watching the draft, at least the last couple of years. So uh, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we will uh, see you next time.